The world of Sandman is chock full of unique visual concepts and ideas. After all, Morpheus is the Lord of Dreaming. Basically, anything you can dream up may exist within the domain of dream. Remember when you were a kid and you had that nightmare that the demon from the cover of the NES game Contra was trying to kill you? Yeah, he lives in the dreaming now. That girl you had a crush on in 11th grade that you used to dream about? She's there, but she has a mustache and a cowboy hat on for some reason. Goro is fighting Solid Snake in your third grade classroom and there isn't anything you can do about it. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh right, dreams. Have you ever had a dream? In the world of Sandman, dreams and nightmares inhabit both the dreaming and the waking world. During the first season of Sandman, which follows the original comic series extremely faithfully, we see multiple dreams and nightmares go missing from the dreaming during the 72 year period in which Morpheus was imprisoned by Tywin Lannister. During this time period, one of the most dangerous nightmares goes missing from the dreaming and embarks on a nearly 100 year quest to infect humanity with his own particular brand of horror. Today's video is on the near complete history of the Corinthian. Corinthian made his comic debut in Sandman issue number 10, written by Neil Gaiman and Mike Dringenberg. There are multiple versions of the Corinthian, but the first one was created by Morpheus, in his own words, as a nightmare created to be the darkness and the fear of darkness in every human heart. A black mirror made to reflect everything about itself that humanity will not confront. Corinthian appears as an average build white man with one fairly awkward ocular anomaly. Corinthian wears a set of round glasses that covers up his, uh, eyes which are actually just two little sets of mouth complete with little tiny baby teeth. There's no confirmation if there are little tiny tongues in there, but I imagine there are. One thing we can be sure of is that this man spends a fortune on Sensodyne products. The original Corinthian appeared during the arc known as The Dollhouse, which focused on Morpheus traveling the world to reclaim multiple dreams and nightmares that had escaped to the waking world while he was imprisoned. During this process, Dream becomes aware of a Dream Vortex, a girl named Rose Walker who had the potential, if left unchecked, to completely destroy the Dreaming and subsequently the world. However, before we get there, there is a miniseries called The Corinthian Death in Venice that discusses how the Corinthian first became a serial killer. Set in 1920, it follows the Corinthian as he first enters the waking world and learns to inhabit the bodies of others, turning their appearance into the classic look we know. The Corinthian ends up haunting a World War I soldier named Charles Constantine, who is a distant relative of John Constantine. Corinthian's main arc throughout the series is that he's capable of haunting others into killing or committing suicide, but he can't perform the act himself. He needs somebody to teach him how to murder, and he believes this soldier Charles can do it, but he grows frustrated with Charles' inability to commit violence. He ends up becoming acquainted with Charles' traveling partner, a woman claiming to be Pestilence, who in actuality is just a crazy person who also is a murderer. The two of them form a pact that Pestilence will teach Corinthian how to murder, and Corinthian implies that he will teach her how to adopt new forms. The story essentially ends with Corinthian killing Pestilence as his first true victim, and once he's done it, he claims it's pretty easy and starts killing multiple other people. Essentially, this is the beginning of his serial killing spree. Among all dreams and nightmares, the Corinthians seem to resent the boundaries between the waking world and the dreaming more than others. Once Morpheus was imprisoned by Roderick Burgess, the Corinthian was left unsupervised, and he went out into the waking world on a nearly 100 year rampage of murder and lust. Corinthian's main targets throughout history were primarily gay and transsexual men who he would kill and eat the eyeballs of. Over time, Corinthian became somewhat of a legend among other active serial killers, serving as the inspiration for many of them to do what they do. Now, if you've finished the Sandman story, you pretty much have a good idea about how this story plays out, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. The Corinthian ends up tracking down Rose Walker's brother Jed and kidnaps him. He then heads to a serial killer convention at a small hotel conference center that's disguised as a serial convention. During the chaos, the Corinthian's presence becomes known to Morpheus, who arrives to retrieve him. The Corinthian had spent the last 70 years wreaking havoc on the people of Earth. However, Morpheus declares him to be a failure, citing his inability to instill fear in humanity and unmakes him, leaving only a small copy of his extremely bizarre skull. It's actually one of the two skulls that reside in his eye holes. 
Now, if you're sensitive to spoilers, you should be aware that everything from this point on is a big spoiler for future seasons of The Sandman, considering how closely the source material was followed in the first season. Morpheus does eventually remake the Corinthian much later in the series. This second version of the Corinthian is not technically the same nightmare, but he has all the same memories as his previous version, as well as refers to himself as that version, so for all accounts and purposes, they're the same being. Morpheus remakes Corinthian in order to have him track down the kidnapped Daniel Hall, the infant son of Lyda Hall, who had been gestating within the Dreaming for a number of years. Because of how long Lyda spent pregnant within the Dreaming, Morpheus believed the child to be his, but opted for the time to let Lyda raise him in the waking world. Eventually, we learn that Daniel is kidnapped by another god you may be familiar with, Loki of the Aesir, and his henchman Puck. However, keep in mind that Gaiman's Loki is fairly accurate to his Norse interpretation. Corinthian, along with Matthew the Raven, conduct a search for Daniel that has them investigate the death of a woman named Carla. Corinthian takes the deceased woman's eyes out and puts them into his, um, eye, mouth, holes. And doing that allows him to see the last thing that she saw, which was Loki killing her. He now knows he has to hunt down Loki, whom he finds in Svartalheim. Corinthian hunts down Loki and beats him badly, eating his eyes and saving Daniel Hall. He does not kill him though, as he's afraid of a curse that may follow him if he did. And that is pretty much all of the relevant history towards the Corinthian in the first run of Sandman and some supplemental material. There are some other side stories with him in it, but they are not crucial to understanding the character. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you learned a lot, and if you did, consider liking and subscribing. This has been Nick with Key Issues, thanks again for watching, and remember the motto, creepy eye holes over everything.